Now that iOS 17 is here, we have access to the new CarPlay features that allow us to offline maps and share music without having to unplug or turn off our iPhone's Bluetooth. With this update, we can quickly switch radio DJs on the fly. So now that we have it, we will not only cover its new features, but also divide into the important settings to change to improve your CarPlay experience as well as share with you some tips and tricks you can try on the latest version of CarPlay. So let's begin. Okay, so first thing first, this is the interface. We should already be familiar with it as soon as you plug it in via USB to Lightning or if your car supports it, it'll be wireless. And if you have a larger display, display size may be stretched out a bit more or if you're using the latest Ford, it could also be taller as well. But regardless, everything should be 100% identical. And when it comes to scrolling between different pages, these little dots right here will indicate how many pages you have. Unfortunately, if you wish to rearrange these apps you have, uh, the only way to do so is if you actually go on your iPhone first and go into settings and then general and tap on CarPlay. Select the vehicle of choice. I have a lot because I have access to a bunch of vehicles. Select the car you like, tap customize, and here are all the apps that you have. If you like to free up some clutter, feel free to remove them right here or tap on these little three lines on the right so corner right here on each app and you can rearrange it to your liking. And if you like to reverse what you did, you can always tap reset. And now that's how you can actually personalize the apps on your Apple CarPlay. Now, if you're curious what type of apps I have, I've done a whole dedicated video right over here where I cover the most useful apps. And these are the apps you see right here. So if you have any questions, be sure to watch that video after this video, of course, but you're always welcome to click on it right there. It'll also be linked in the description down below. Now, new changes for iOS 17 isn't really much, especially if you already watched my previous video, you know, if you go into settings and tap wallpapers, we got given this new wallpaper. That's this new one right here. In addition to that, if you actually play Apple Music or you're subscribed to Apple Music, there is now this new share icon with a person it looks like. Here, an individual, so long as it's on the later version of iOS 17, they can scan this barcode or you can click on it to maximize it. So with their camera, they can scan it and they'll have access to add music to the virtual queue. Super easy and works really well. Other than that, here you have the discover nearby contacts. I highly recommend having this enabled unless you're a Lyft driver because if you turn this off, anybody has access to this QR code and they can add music to the queue. But if you have this turned on, it's only allowing people in your contact have access to your CarPlay. This allows you to no longer have to disconnect cell phones from a CarPlay if you want to switch between radio DJs. That's what that does. And of course, right here where it says waiting for others, this will be where you'll see everybody else who is connected. But right now it's just us, so that's it. Aside from that, that's basically it. The other new feature you can find is Apple CarPlay now supports offline mode. Because now when you ever tap on Apple Maps, this map is actually offline. If you actually like to dedicate like little sections of the map to download on your iPhone, it's super easy to do so. All you need to do is just launch your Apple Maps on your iPhone, tap on the icon of your profile, and select Offline Maps. Here you can actually download a new map or manage the ones you already have downloaded. So you can delete some if they take up too much space. But in Download New Maps, you can actually like select dedicated circles or squares, I'm sorry, and then just hit download and that will now be downloaded on your device, which means Apple CarPlay will now have access to it as well. And if you use an Apple Watch, this will also allow you to offline and view that offline map on your wrist. Really nifty stuff. Now, since we're still in the map subject of things, Apple Maps is extremely advanced because whenever you set a waypoint to a destination and you tap go, not only will this always constantly suggest a tap, the fastest route first but if you tap this little up arrow you can not only share ETA with an individual so if you're beating up with somebody at a restaurant you can let them know and see your ETA at in live stats 
So if there's a delay, they'll be alerted. But if you actually tap add stops, you can add additional stops to your route, which is really helpful. Another cool thing is this little icon with the quotation. This allows you to actually report incidents such as speed checks, crash, or any hazards of any kind. And if you're confused at a new train you want to see more, you can always switch between 2D or 3D. And of course you have the capability to zoom in, zoom out, hit this little up arrow to take it back. Search will give you keyboard dictation as well as some suggestion search for like gas, parking, restaurant, and etc. Pretty much self-explanatory from here. And in your favorites, if you like to add things to your favorites, all you have to do is just go on your iPhone, enter an address, or tap on a business. You can actually add as favorites. And now next time when you're in your vehicle, you'll find your favorite list library right here. So you can add work, entertainment places like the movies, or your home, of course. And then using machine learning, Apple is able to identify what's your commonly your common route and will automatically actually input the address so you can see as you're driving if there's any traffic or any unwelcome un delays. Very helpful stuff. Now, if you're driving along and you don't like seeing your notifications pop up all the time on the bottom here whenever you receive a text message or you forgot something with your air tags, if you'd like to disable this, it's extremely easy to do so. All you need to do is just go on your iPhone and go into settings and then tap on notifications. From here, scroll down until you find the message app for your iPhone. Then on the bottom right here where it says show in CarPlay, disable this. And that's how you do that. And if other notifications pop up, just make sure to locate the app for that notification and disable it. So like to find my as an example is another app that uses notification cards for CarPlay. Now Apple CarPlay works even really well with third party apps. So if you don't like the first party Apple Maps, you can always go use Google, Waze, as well as other third party ones. But regardless, whichever one you're using, if, there's, if you're actually using the volume prompt, whenever notifications pop up telling you make a right at this light and etc., as soon as the volume pops up, use the vehicle volume knob. You can actually lower the volume pop, prompt for the uh, Arthur that you're using for navigation. So that's how you can actually lower and adjust the audio for the volume prompt when you're using navigation. Proceed to the route, then turn right onto Commons Drive. Now, since we're talking about customization, I might as well cover some unique features that Apple CarPlay has. Regardless which music streaming app you're using, the album cover artwork, you can actually remove this if you don't like it. To do so, just go in settings on CarPlay and scroll down to show art, album art. Here is where you go in and enable that or disable that. When it's disabled, the album artwork will still be there, just so it'll be extremely blurred out, giving a cool, seamless, clear transition. So that's what it does. Personal preference, but that's how you could customize it. Now, since we're in settings, drive focus, if you want your iPhone to automatically be set to driving focus to eliminate distractions, you can leave it on or disable this. So if that becomes annoying, that's where you actually go in and disable that. And if you like to adjust the settings for the driving focus, if you do like using it, it's extremely easy to do so. Just, you do have to go on your iPhone and go into the focus section, tap on driving, and here's where you can actually go in and actually customize it, where some people can actually bypass the focus and still get a hold of you in case of emergency, like your spouse or your children. You can add the people right here. You can allow it to auto reply or not reply. And the auto reply message would be right here. Feel free to edit that. But if somebody texts you, this is the respond. iOS will actually send them right away, letting them know that you're busy right now, you're driving. And you can also change the screen on your iPhone as well as your Apple Watch. If you have like a calm screen when you're driving to automatically switch wallpapers. And then when it says turn on automatically, you either have it manual when connected to your vehicle's Bluetooth or automatically or enabled activate with CarPlay, which we have turned off. 
And if you don't like this drive focus, you can always delete it all together or rename it if you wish. Or even change the icon if you tap edit. But that's how you can actually go in in depth and customize driving focus for your iPhone and CarPlay. Now back in our settings, announce messages. This will allow Siri to automatically renew messages, personal preference, you can leave it on or off. Appearance, you can have it automatic or always dark. I like always dark, it matches the interior of all my cars since they're all black. But you can always enable maps to always remain black. So you can leave it on automatic in light mode and maps navigation will always appear black. Personal preference again. Siri search and suggestions. Remember I was telling you about the driving where Siri, if you use Apple Maps, could actually automatically suggest a route every time you're in the vehicle, depending on your habits. You could disable that entirely right here where it says suggestion and dashboard if you don't like that. Automatically send messages. You could leave that. Show apps behind Siri. Again, personal preference. You can read the description right there. Other than that, that's a quick overview of iOS 17. Some cool features and some ways to definitely personalize it to your own personal preference so you get a better understanding how to really utilize Apple Car Maps. Other important things we could cover is check right here. This will show your reception for cellular, Wi-Fi if you're connected, as well as the time. And of course, you can always long press right here to activate Siri. Some vehicles also support this where you can actually verbally just request Siri to go on by saying the phrase, hey, you know, S-I-R-I, -I, or S-I-R-I -I automatically. That's, you could actually activate virtual voice system that way as well. Or some vehicles also support Siri to be activated with the voice control on your steering wheel. And just like that, now you are pro in terms of knowing all the best settings, best features, and clever ways to really utilize CarPlay to your full potential. So if you found this video guide useful and informative, you know what to do. Greatly appreciate it if you actually leave this video a like. Those help me out a lot and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. If you'd like to watch more, maybe you're unfamiliar with what the channel is about. If you own an Apple Watch, check out this video over here where I highlight all the new changes coming out for WatchOS 10 because there's a lot. And then that video over there is some car content because I also cover car technology stuff as well. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.